Batman's utility belt was first shown containing choking gas capsules that Batman often used to hide his disappearances. Two issues after that was the debut of the Batarang, which he then pulled from a hidden pocket in the back of the belt. Over time, Batman's utility belt has become the most important tool in his war on crime. Either in capsules or pouches, depending on the era, Bruce would fill these compartments with items to meet the specific needs of that evening. There's a lot of hidden details that you might not know about this very extra wardrobe accessory. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is what culture.com and these are 10 things you probably didn't know about Batman's utility belt. Number 10. Bat Family Variations Now, Several members of the Bat Family each have their own variation of Batman's utility belt, which they keep stocked with items that they will find useful to their individual crime-fighting endeavors. Originally, Robin's belt appeared to be smooth leather from the outside, but he had a variety of pouches on the interior of the belt that held his equipment, including his own R-shaped throwing weapons, Birdarangs. Modern Boy Wonders wear belts with outside pouches similar to the Cape Crusader's own belt. In a very early appearance, Barbara Gordon carried her equipment in a hip attack purse before she adopted the more practical utility belt. And through most of her costumes, with the exception of her Burnside outfit, she's opted for a belt with cylinders on it. The Burnside Batgirl costume was replete with pouches, while the pouches on the armoured bat suit of Jace Fox's Batman are huge and modular, like most of his costume. Looking at Nightwing's sleek and tight outfit would lead people to believe that he doesn't actually have a utility belt. And they would actually be right, but also kind of wrong. It may not be a belt, but Dick Grayson is not without his tools and weapons, as it's within his gauntlets that he hides most of of his tricks and tools, and these include his wingdings, which are his own version of the Batarang, gas capsules, and other tools. Number 9. Surprising Contents now, there are some truly surprising items that can be found within Batman's utility belt. Despite shunning the use of magic in general, even though he wisely acknowledges its existence, Batman actually carries a magic key that was given to him by Satana that will turn any door into a portal to Satana's home Shadow Crest, which is located just outside of Gotham. And in Batman the Detective Number 1, it was revealed that Batman has ghost-punching gloves that do exactly what they claim. He was given the gloves by John Constantine, who won them in a card game with a demon, and Bruce was pretty sure that he cheated. Master Wayne also has a device called the Echo, which will override the limitations of any car and turn it into a Batmobile. It will even project the image of the Dark Knight's car over the existing vehicle. But one of the most surprising things that Batman keeps in his utility belt are lollipops. In Nightwing number 89, the lollipop and Nightwing's juggling was instrumental in calming and upset John Kent. Dick told John that Bruce keeps lollipops very close to similarly sized smoke bombs, and Superman joked that he didn't know which worried him more, that Batman might accidentally offer a smoke bomb to a child or did we throw a lollipop at the Joker and attempt to disappear? Number 8. It used to get taken a lot Early in his career, several criminals managed to remove Batman's utility belt after capturing him. They were under the mistaken impression that the lack of the belt made the Dark Knight an easier target, but they soon found out how wrong they were. In Star Spangled Comics number 89, a group of criminals captured Bruce and took his belt. With the help of scientists, they copied the belt and made similar ones for their own use, but the plan was thwarted by the dynamic duo. In Detective Comics number 185, the Dark Knight's belt was also taken a second time, but on this occasion, it passed through several hands. It was first found by a young boy and then passed into the hands of a homeless man, a pawn shop owner, and a leather collector. It finally ended up with some criminals who Batman was able to lure into a trap to retrieve the belt from. Batman then created duplicate utility belts for himself after this incident. In more modern times, Batman has implemented a number of security measures to make stealing his belt a little more difficult. The belt is now set to emit an electrical charge to anyone who attempts to open it without the proper sequence. It's also set to fire out a knockout gas if tampered with, and the pouches are now encoded so only Bats or one of his trusted allies can even open them. Number 7. Special Compartments of the many tools in Batman's arsenal, some of them require special handling and compartments that are modified to handle their special needs. For example, one is lead-lined, within which Bruce keeps a kryptonite ring that Superman gave him in case he or another Kryptonian goes rogue. The pouch is ultra-secure and only Bats and certain members of the Bat family know of its existence or even how to get into it. Another modified compartment is the pouch that contains Batman's thermite grenades. The fire from these grenades is impossible to extinguish and burns three times that of molten lava, and Bruce learned from experience experience when early in his career a thermite grenade went off and burned the entire belt to ash. He also carries delicate packs of napalm that have to be cushioned lest they explode as well. Less explosive, but no less of a problem if they go off, Batman carries balls of incredibly strong adhesive that he uses to immobilize his enemies. He also carries an electromagnetic pulse device that can disrupt all electrical equipment within a 7 mile radius, which he needs to keep under lock and key because an accidental discharge would completely disable half of his own equipment instantly. Bruce has also taken special 
little care with the handling of his freeze grenades. Using Mr. Freeze's technology, he can freeze his opponents or a body of water if needed, but an accidental detonation would be an utter catastrophe for the Dark Knight. Number 6. Specific Upgrades Batman has had to make specific upgrades to his utility belt after certain situations to make sure that he would be ready for them if he found himself in similar circumstances again. In Detective Comics number 181, a criminal called the Human Magnet, who controlled magnetic fields, was able to keep Bruce at bay by repelling him by using his belt. He later created a utility belt from plastic and wood to combat this problem. Batman first encountered Mr. Freeze in Detective Comics number 373. After that fateful meeting, Batman installed a heating unit in the belt to prevent him from freezing to death if he was attacked by Freeze's ice gun. He also created a carbon dioxide gas ejection system in the belt that would move any heavy object that may have fallen on top of him. In Batman number 650, Jason Todd returned from the dead and took the identity of the Red Hood. During a savage fight with Batman, Jason managed to cut the utility belt off him. Elsewhere, the No Man's Land story arc saw the Dark Knight use a bulkier and more practical belt similar to that of a workman's tool belt to allow him to carry all of the paraphernalia that he would need to defend the earthquake-ravaged Gotham City. Number 5 pouches versus cylinders. In The Dark Knight Returns in 1986, Frank Miller drew the utility belt with pouches similar to those worn on the combat gear of the military. He repeated a similar design in Batman Year One, and by 2000, every artist in Batman Legends of the Dark Knight had begun using that design. After that, it became the standard, a dark yellow belt with at least 10 pouches and a buckle in the center. And this primary design is used to this very day. But it begs the question though, which is actually better, cylinders or pouches? Certainly the cylinders to look is sleeker, which is more in keeping with a classic look for Batman, but it's hard to discount the fact that the pouches are just more practical, and have more versatility and allow Bruce to use them in ways that he could have never done with the cylinders. For example, he could pick up a clue and hide it in a pouch, and that would be near impossible in those slim cylinders. However, Batman has quick-release triggers set on those cylinders of his gas and smoke grenades, and this is much less viable with pouches, because it requires reaching inside to get the necessary items. So really it comes down to personal preference, but it seems that Batman is sticking with the pouches. Number 4. A Flirtation with Miniaturization as the utility belt began to evolve and become more of an integral part to Batman's costume and arsenal, there was a move for his artists at the time to miniaturize as much as possible to get as many tools in the belt as possible. And this led to a utility belt that had thin capsules or cylinders on it. They included a number of smoke, gas, and other pellets, a miniature camera, a set of small lockpicks, a laser torch, a fingerprint dusting kit, an infrared flashlight, and his rebreather. This, of course, is just an average listing of what bats might carry at any given time, and he would often change items to fit specific situations. But the cylinders aren't the only places on the belt to store items, as the batarangs were stored in a pouch on the back of the belt. The bat rope runs from inside the belt and through a belt buckle. The spaces between the cylinders are also compartments that hold a considerable amount of equipment, including a medical kit and antitoxins, an interface with the bat computer, controls to his various vehicles, or mission-specific equipment like defoliants, de-icers, or antidotes for Joker Venom. Number 3. Batarangs the Batarang was introduced in Detective Comics number 31 and is a throwing weapon used by Batman that's usually made from a steel alloy and is carried within his utility belt. They're either folded with a locking hinge mechanism or small enough to fit in a special pouch in the interior of the belt. Based either on Aboriginal Australian boomerangs or Japanese shuriken, depending on the era, the Batarangs are crafted in a stylized bat shape. But some Batarangs are harder and heavier than others, and these are often used to break through barriers, disarm opponents, or even knock them out. Others are lighter but have razor sharp edges. These tend to be used to cut power lines to allow Batman to utilize the darkness, disrupt or destroy machinery, or have even been embedded in some of the Dark Knight's more powerful and unstoppable foes. At various points in his career, he also attached his bat rope to the Batarang in order to swing from building to building. And there have even been a few Batarangs that have been more high-tech. There have been some specifically designed to explode, emit an electrical charge, or emit gas to render his foes unconscious. There's even a Batarang that gives out an ultrasonic sound to deafen his foes. And Batman also has a remote control control batarang that allows him to direct its flight in order to see what its path is and scan the area. Number 2. Tools of the Trade in many ways, Batman's utility belt is very much like the toolbox of a mechanic or the supply cart of an artist. With it, he carries the tools that make it possible for him to protect the citizens of Gotham, deduce clues left by his adversaries, and defeat foes that, on occasion, may be physically superior to him. Like any great craftsman, it's his skill and experience in using the tools of his trade that make Bruce Wayne the Dark Knight of Gotham. There are some items that are constants in Batman's utility belt. In addition to a variety of batarangs that serve different functions, there will always be a bat rope. 
There will also be a variety of small pellets and bombs. These include smoke bombs that the Gotham Guardian uses to hide his departures and disorientate his enemies, tear or slate gas pellets to disable his opponents, and flash grenades to blind and disorientate them. Some more specific but commonly crafted tools include a rebreather that allows Batman to breathe underwater for a brief time, bat tracers that he can put on thugs to track them, a forensic kit to gather clues, lock picks, restraints and bat cuffs, a medical kit, a computer uplink to the larger computer in the back cave, and a camera and recording devices. And number one, it was originally just a functionality belt. In the very beginning, Batman wore a normal leather belt with a round buckle. Its function was to simply just hold up his trousers. In Detective Comics number 28, the buckle was a square one. In that same issue, the Dark Knight produced his bat rope from the belt for the first time, and in the next issue, he held gas pellets within the belt. As Batman's missions evolved, so too did his belt. He upgraded the belt by using top-grade leather and steel-reinforced pockets within it, making the belt bulletproof. He also incorporated a radio into the buckle of his and Robin's belt so that they could stay in contact if separated. He created a waterproof compartment for matches and presumably compartments for money and the keys to the Batmobile, although the latter two are rarely mentioned. Shockingly, the Golden Age Batman had a holster on his belt and even carried a gun. He largely abandoned the gun when Robin came into the picture and later versions of Batman would never carry firearms. Although Bruce is definitely a proficient shot and he trains all of his Robins in the use of firearms, despite the fact that they never use them in the field. And there we go my friends, those were 10 things you probably didn't know about Batman's YouTube utility belt. I hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Instagram at RetroJ, but the O is a zero. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.